This is an unfathomable and unspeakable act uh, by somebody filled with hate and, and with a deranged mind. In, in Charleston, you have a horrible, hateful person go into a church and kill people there to pray and worship with each other is, is something that is beyond incomprehensible. Welcome back to Hard Boys. The mayor of Charleston just said the actions of Dylan Ruff, the ones he's accused of, are beyond comprehension. Was he crazy? Is he crazy? Or just very angry? Deranged? What is it? And where did he get his ideas about African Americans? And why did he sit in that church with his victims for a full hour, reportedly seeming to pray with them before gutting them all down? And he killed every person he shot, apparently. Perhaps most relevant now, what will happen to him? If Ruff, is he going to get the death penalty facing him? For more, I'm joined by Brian Levin, a professor of criminal justice at California State University, San Bernardino. And Miller Shealy, who's a former South Carolina state uh, prosecutor who focused on death penalty case. Let me talk to Mr. Shealy first. You know, I was looking at the aggravating factors like multiple murders, a kidnapping. How many of them do apply here, sir? If the guy's convicted. Well, there are several that, that might. There are several that might apply. One, one is there's possible kidnapping, depending on how the, the facts develop and what he told people inside the church. Probably the best one that's the most applicable is the fact that he killed a number of people, nine people. Multiple murders like this in this situation, that's the main one going forward. Do you, what is the prevalence of the, uh, the use of the death penalty down there in your state? Uh, S South Carolina uh, uses the death penalty, I would say, quite frequently among death penalty states. Uh, our last execution was about a year or two ago, which is not terribly unusual, but the state the population tends to support the death penalty. Prosecutors tend to be for it. And uh, I think it's very likely that you'll see a death penalty in this case, a death penalty prosecution anyway. And you have the chair and you have lethal injection, right? That's correct, yes. And who makes that call? The lethal the injection. Jury? The sorry. jury may, whom, whom, it's only lethal injection, is that it the, now? I thought the, it was both. The, 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 way it, the, way it works here, the way it works here on the, edu on the uh, uh, execution, is that the jury will have to, the jury and the jury alone will have to make the decision whether life or death is appropriate after hearing all the evidence. So the jury will actually make the decision if it comes to that, if they convict him, and I can't imagine they won't, but when, when they, if they do, they, the jury will make the decision, not the judge. Okay, a photo of Dylan Ruff from his Facebook page shows the young man posing with two distinct patches on his jacket. One is the flag of the apartheid era South Africa, and the other is the flag of the former Rhodesia, which was also a white supremacist society. So a little politics in there. Brian Levin, this case, how do you look at it right now? They've got the guy. He's in custody. They've got the suspect. You know, before I answer that, you know, I, I just remember what Bobby Kennedy said. Uh, and and you're, 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 uh, you idolize him, too, uh, where he wrote about... Violence and lawlessness and, and, and racial division. He said, let's dedicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago to tame the savages of man and make gentle the life of this world. Let us dedicate ourselves to that. And, and that's something that, you know, it just, it just hit me. Uh, just interview after interview today on this. When is it going to stop? With regard to your question, though, and thank you for letting me uh, just to entertain that. He not only can face the death penalty under South Carolina law, there are at least two federal statutes that he can face the death penalty for. One is uh, 18 United States Code 247, which deals with church arsons. But within that, if you kill someone while they're exercising their religious belief, you can get the death penalty under federal law. Right. Also, under the Shepherd Bird Hate Crime Act, which was enacted in 2009 and, and, and became operable in 2010 for intentionally selecting his victims on the basis of race, he can get the death penalty for that. So he's in, he's in deep trouble. The, the only thing that I could think could possibly save this miscreant would be uh, an, an establishment of legal insanity, but I think there's going to be a tough time for that because he premeditated with these folks. He planned. He was there for an hour. Uh, and it seems to me that 
uh, he at least evidenced consciousness of knowing right from wrong and knew the consequences of what he was doing. So we're talking I mean, about what we see. I'm sorry, you, uh, you go, Chris. I want to go, I want to go, Miller Shirley. How do you respond to all that? Do you think that, that it's likely that the federal authorities will claim him as a, as a defendant rather than allow the state authorities to take up a murder case against him? It's, it's, it's hard to say right now, but if, if I had to bet, having been an assistant United States attorney and having been a prosecutor at the state level, I think the state's going to get the first crack at it, and that's what they should do. The state has far more experience at this here. Uh, they do it. Cases are upheld. We do carry out executions. And this did happen in downtown Charleston. It falls classically within state law, although I agree with our other guests. There, are, there, are, there is a federal angle here. but. Clearly, he's, he's very much in the clutches of state law right now. There's just no question about it. The aggravating circumstances are clear. Okay. I also think it's correct that it looks like going forward, this is going to be a mental state case. This is going to be about psychiatry and psychiatrists. It's going to turn on his mental state. He may not be insane, but the Supreme Court of the United States has been over backwards, and properly so, I think, in general, to allow people who are subject to the death penalty to present every aspect of their life, every aspect of their mental state, even going back to childhood. So we know who did this. The question is why he did it. And the answer to the question why, does it involve some kind of mental disease, some kind of disturbance, some kind of organic brain disorder? My guess is that's the only way the defense has to go here. Okay, Brian Levine, right, thank but, you. But Sorry, but, oh, Brian, go ahead, Brian. You have a thought on that. Go ahead. Yeah, but you know, look, the Unabomber, we have the Aurora shooter at, at, at the movie theater. Uh, insanity is a very difficult threshold to reach, and neither the Unabomber it's or the Aurora shooter. It's not about insanity. It's not about insanity. Right? No, I, I, it's I, not I, about I understand insanity in the death penalty case. I, 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 under, I understand that. What they also allow are mitigating circumstances. Having been involved with uh, death penalty cases in, involving extremists, for instance, uh, I can tell you that um, it, it's going to be tough. But it's not, it's not impossible. But that, that being said, look, these guys generally are an amalgam of chaotic experiences, failures, frustrations, and motives. And, and what we often find is some kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to say sympathetic story, but some, some angle on this. Juries, I don't think, in a case as horrific as this, this is the worst racial mass murder that we've yeah. seen in many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the one other thing I want to add, we saw something in Mississippi with a racial homicide where the feds came in and prosecuted even after there was a successful prosecution on the state side. There is no double jeopardy prohibition in the United States against both a state trial and a federal trial, even if there's a conviction okay. or acquittal on the state side. Brian Levine, thank you very much. Miller Shilly, thank you very much. Uh, shooting spe thank suspect you. Dylan Roth has arrived back in South Carolina. He's now at the Cannon Detention Center in Charleston. Do you have a thought on that? Uh, uh, just one thought. Um, I, you know, if, if I had a vote, I would argue for, even if the state uh, does the first prosecution, I'd argue for a federal prosecution, because I, I would argue that this was a crime against the nation. It was a crime against us, a crime against our values, a crime against our plur pluralism, um, uh, all that this nation stands for, uh, and it should be prosecuted by the federal government. Maybe they should do both. Anyway, well, um, it's not like robbing a gas station, although yeah. that could be just as horrible in its, in its reality. Yeah. It can be, but I do think you have a major point there. We'll be right back with more from Charleston in just a minute.